Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center here in Towson, Maryland. Today's tutorial is on colorectal liver metastasis. Uh, colorectal liver metastasis is essentially when colon cancer has spread or metastasized uh, to the liver. So I'd like to go over a little bit of the anatomy first. This is a, um, a drawing of the liver. And we're going to call this the portal circulation. Um, and this is a portion of the colon, or what's the called the large intestine. And colon cancer originates in the in the large intestine, and that's the reason why it is now recommended that people begin get having their colon screened by colonoscopy at age 50. So if you haven't done that, sir, please uh, please go ahead and do get that taken care of. Call your doctor to get that scheduled. Um, and that's a way of certainly uh, preventing or, or catching or di and diagnosing colon cancer at an early stage. Uh, but for those situations where the colon cancer actually be, um, grows to an, to an advanced stage, it gets into the bloodstream mostly through the portal circulation, and this is the portal, and metastasizes, metastasizes or spread to the liver. And the topic that I'm going to talk about today is how do we manage patients who have colon cancer who's, who has uh, metastasized and spread to the liver. Um, and the reason we're aggressive um, with this subset of patients are, are, uh, are a fewfold. One, Autopsy studies have shown that patients who have had their colon colorectal metastasis, most specifically in the liver, removed, uh, quite frequently have no evidence of disease in any other location. In other words, it is possible that this that the liver is the only um, the only place where colon cancer would spread. It's not always the case, but it certainly is uh, the case in in a large majority of the people. And having said that, um, there, there, are, there is a great volume of retrospective data um, to show that it is certainly a worthwhile venture to have colon cancer treated in the liver. So as I mentioned, there, is, um, there are a large amount, large series of retrospective data, um, there is no level, there is no current level one evidence or, ra or randomized prospective trials and because of the great volume of, of uh, retrospective data and because of the fact that um, it is probably at this point un unethical to sub subject people or patients to having no surgery at all, um, they're probably, they're, for, that, for those reasons we're not going to see a prospective randomized trial. Uh, unless something changes where, strong, where the chemotherapy is so strong that it takes care of uh, these cancers and there is no role for surgery. But nonetheless, over the past uh, 20 years or so, um, there are thousands of patients who have had uh, treatment of metastatic colorectal carcinoma, namely liver resection. Um, and the number that consistently comes up in these retrospective uh, studies is survival that's greater than 30 percent and somewhere in the 35 percent range um, in the earlier studies and now with the advent of some more successful chemotherapeutic agents we're actually seeing retrospective data where five-year survival is in the 50 percent range in patients who have had treatment for metastatic colorectal carcinoma. So that's actually um, for that's actually incredible survival, Certain, uh, certainly when we're dealing with patients who already, by definition, have metastatic disease. So what is liver resection or liver-directed therapy and all, and all this? And I'll, and I'll go through all, all of this. This is the liver. And the liver actually has eight segments. And we can, we can draw these. That's two, actually, three. Segment one is 
called the caudate lobe. And it actually is under the liver. That's segment one. This is segment four. Four has segment four A and four B. Uh, this is segment five, six, seven, and eight. And the right lobe of the liver is segments five through eight, and the left lobe of the liver is two, three, four, and the caudate lobe is more towards the left, but there are some portions that are that are actually on the right. So this is combined. And the reason there are eight segments is that each one of these segments actually has its own blood supply um, and uh, drainage as well as its own biliary radicals. So these are these can independently survive based on uh, the anatomical distribution of both the arterial venous and uh, biliary system. Um, and the reason it's important is be because the liver is so anatomically defined, it allows us as surgeons to also anatomically remove segments of the liver. So when patients have colorectal metastasis, there is a variety of ways in which they can present. Um, some patients present with what we call a synchronous disease, which is at the same time as diagnosis of their colon cancer, and then there is a subgroup that have what's called metachronous disease, which is a uh, presentation of the liver metastases at greater than 12 months of, since diagnosis. So, synchronous and metachronous. When patients are diagnosed with colon cancer, uh, before colon surgery, a full metastatic workup is, is done and the patient is staged and it is determined whether the patient has synchronous metastatic disease or not. Um, nonetheless, uh, in patients, uh, so the patients present synchronously or metachronously. Uh, the other method that, the other manner in, in which they present is with respect to the amount of disease. Um, do they have solitary lesions? Do they have multiple lesions uh, or tumors? Are they isolated to a particular segment? Uh, and so forth. And in the past, it used to be said that the cutoff for resection was, you know, less than four tumors and that you had to have greater than one centimeter uh, margin of resection, which is the, uh, the di you know, the area around the tumor. Um, but now we're more focused on can you achieve clearance um, of the tumors in either one or two phases um, with the help of chemotherapy to shrink it. So we're, we're more lenient and we're more, we're more aggressive and we're more tolerant and we're more willing to uh, perform liver clearance in, in not just one stage but sometimes even in two stages. So let's take this particular case for example um, where a patient presents with, with two lesions um, um, and let's say that the patient uh, presents metachronously that um, this patient had chemotherapy for uh, six months after the colon surgery and that these these tumors were picked up on routine surveillance you know, over a year out. At this point uh, the option is to proceed with either more chemotherapy or to go directly with liver directed therapy or, or surgical resection. And in this particular case, we're saying that there are two tumors in segment, one, two tumors, one in segment six, one in seven, and they both can be removed by what's called a segment six, seven, or a right hemihepatectomy um, without much uh, difficulty. It is, it is well known that up to 75% of the liver can be removed uh, at one time if there is an adequate uh, remnant or what's called the, um, the, future, the future remnant. And this is um, another potential scenario. 
where you may have one large solitary tumor taking up the majority of the right lobe of the liver. And in this particular case, a, uh, a right hepatic lobectomy or formal right hepatic resection where the blood supply just to the right side is taken can be performed. Left-sided resections can be performed. And the most aggressive operation is removing about 70% or 75% is called a uh, Tri -seg right trisegmentectomy or left trisegmentectomy. Right, right trisegmentectomy is an is a extension of the right lobe of the liver to the left side, and, and, and left trisegmentectomy is uh, vice versa. So clearly, um, resections can be done in, aggre in an aggressive manner. 